We're at the shop and we're ready to uh, start working on these snow plow wings. These are uh, a lot like the pro wings. Um, I've got the rubber squeegees off the bottom of them. These are painted white. These were on a Meyer plow before, but we've got them on the Western now, so we're gonna get them cleaned up and painted up. Uh, I got these from a buddy of mine. So they've got a little scale and a little crap on them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the needle scaler and I'm gonna get into these areas a little bit and uh, we'll try and get them cleaned up. I may spray some uh, phosphoric acid on that rust just to kind of neutralize it a little bit. But uh, we'll do all that after I get the surface prepped. I'll, I'm gonna take the DA over them too. So we'll get to that here real quick. This is a snow plow. I'm not looking for a show car finish. So, there's a needle scaler for those of you uh, who've never used one or even know what it is. And what this tool does, it's got these oscillating needles. I'm going to hold on to them here. And it doesn't seem like it would do a whole lot. This is a Harbor Freight one, this is their smaller version. Um, but these needles oscillate like little tentacles and uh, it's going to get loud here so just hang tight but uh, looks like my tripod doesn't want to cooperate today there we go let's give that a whirl um, it'll get this loose flaky material off straight down also, I tend to use it at an angle. These things are really good for super scaly metal, um, like uh, hot rolled steel, gets kind of scaly like that, which is what this is, this is not cold rolled, this is uh, uh, this is eighth inch I think on the back of here, I could be wrong, maybe it's cold rolled, but it looks like hot rolled after uh, getting some of the paint peeled back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to it and uh, then I'm going to take the DA over it. So I'll bring you guys back uh, in a bit because I'm not going to be able to talk with any of these tools running. And uh, basically just going to go over all those little crevices where the paint's bubbling up because it's rusty. Those are weld areas. These are not continuous weld. They're stitched there, there, and there. Um, and then there's a little bit around where this attachment point is here so we'll go ahead and get that cleaned up and I'll bring you back in a couple minutes. Now that I uh, got it warm enough in here I decided uh, it's time we're going to go ahead and take the DA to these. This is an old uh, Ingersoll probably 5 16 orbit um, DA. It's pretty aggressive and I use it for stuff like working on equipment because it's faster and uh, just saves wear and tear on my nicer DAs. So I've got some 80 grit on that. And basically, I'm just going to try and feather back some of the rust in there and all that. Spend a couple minutes on it. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I've got some uh, acid on the back of this and uh, you probably shouldn't get the acid on the paint 
but these are snowplow wings and I'm really not overly concerned with it. So we've got that one going and the other one's sitting over top of the trash can. Uh, I actually stripped the fronts of these because I want them to look the best. That's the part you see. So you've got that on the go. This is the paint we're going to use. It's this kind. Uh, IH Red. Um, this is Martin Sr. from Napa. This can is probably 10 years old. I've painted three or four snow plows with it and never had a problem with it. Uh, we're going to mix some hardener in with it, hopefully. Probably this kind. One thing about it, these hardeners don't last forever, so let's see if I can find my... <laughs> Somewhere in this cabinet. There it is. We have some of this. Wet look hardener. It's liquid still, so that's a plus. We're going to mix that uh, four to one. And uh, a little chemistry lesson here today. Uh, this is acrylic enamel reducer. This is Centauri. Um, it's what I have. So it's going in there. I never really had a problem cocktailing this stuff up. Uh, you can go backwards, or I'm sorry, you can't go backwards, but you can always go forward. I could, uh, I could put urethane reducer instead of this enamel reducer in that enamel paint. You just can't put enamel reducer in urethane paint. Uh, same thing with the hardener. I could put urethane hardener in there, no problems. So I may not use the wet look. I may use, uh, problem is I don't have any universal. I have some of that kind. If I can figure out where the hell it is. Somewhere in this cabinito. Here's some uh, activator for uh, urethane paint. Something that I'm not using any longer. So we could use that if we wanted to. Uh, you could also really get crazy. And I'm probably going to do it. I don't know that I'm going to put fish eye eliminator in it, which is that right there. But we may put some accelerator in it. Um, I've never had a problem uh, mixing this kind of stuff in my enamel uh, equipment paint. I just don't use enamel paint for uh, automo automobile uh, type stuff. So it's a little tip for you if you're worried about it. And if you're uh, really concerned about it, mix up a little bit first and make sure it doesn't turn into cottage cheese. Um, chances are it's going to harden up and it's going to be just fine. Uh, got some epoxy in the cup. There's the catalyst for it. The can's empty. There's what's left of it. That was, uh, let's see, that was Montana brand. That was uh, back in my Montana days. I'm not really using the stuff anymore. I'm just cleaning the cabinet, especially for jobs like this. Uh, we're going to use the finish line 3 gun. I've got a 1.8 tip in it. I'm not changing it. If I have to choke the fluid down, I will. Um, this is my all-around gun here, so if I need to shoot some uh, primer or poly surfacer or whatever through it, I use that gun. Because if something happens to it, it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the acid wiped down off of those uh, wings, and I'm going to get them hung up, and uh, I'm going to get the heat going too so I can get it nice and warm in here. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get some epoxy primer flying. So I'll see you in a few. Primer time. Get that in the cup there. Get the lid on. And grab a pair of gloves over here. Get ready to get this done. Well, I ran out of diesel fuel and I don't feel like buying fuel just to paint these two things so I have the infrared light on them heating up the metal. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get you guys on the stand. Find a good spot for you here.
There we go. We'll give that a whirl. And, uh, get some gloves on here. Pretty sure this metal is up to temperature. Been in front of the infrared light for about 40 minutes, so uh, I'm sure it's uh, nice and toasty. And that'll do. That'll be just marvelous. See how this one is. Make sure it's cold. I'll get masked up here. I'm going to do a quick test pattern over on the wall on my paper.
perfect. That was the perfect amount. Got just a tiny bit left. That's it. So go ahead and get this gun cleaned up and uh, give that some flash time there. I didn't put it on super heavy. I kind of went on the first coat just to get some on it. And then second coat, I went a full wet coat on it. Uh, kind of back to back, which is not really the way you're supposed to do it, but it's equipment. Probably end up giving that about a half an hour to uh, go ahead and gas off. And then I'll go ahead and hit it with the red paint. So, not really a whole lot to this job. Uh, just more paint practice. These are the kind of jobs that I started doing, uh, trying to learn how to paint. And uh, I think these are the kind of things that help you get the experience you need and the confidence you need to learn how to use a spray gun now. Um, technique is uh, kind of out the window when it comes to stuff like this because there's really so many angles and different uh, spots on those wings that I guess you're really not getting a lot of good experience but it's as far as I'm concerned, it's it's time it, with a gun in your hand and, and learning some gun handling. one more rinse here real good. And I'm going to go ahead and let that set in the gun until it's time to do the rest of it. We're probably 85% cleaned out there, but not 100%. So I'm gonna let that set, and uh, we'll go ahead and bring you guys back when it's time for the rest. Uh, got the paint in the gun here, this IH red that we're gonna use. And for anybody who doesn't like to strain paint, especially old paint, no, it didn't make cottage cheese when I mixed it together. It was already like that. There was some floaters in that can, so we're going to use it anyway. I have faith. So I'm going to get you guys set up out here. We'll go ahead and uh, get masked up and get this going. I got about a cap full of accelerator in this, so hopefully that will... Uh, curtail some of this cold weather I'm dealing with in here with no heat right now.
I've got these things wired down, one to a step stool and the other one to a uh, bucket there so they're not going to flop. You guys are probably laughing your asses off watching me chase those things around earlier. So with, uh, this is enamel single stage and urethane I do kind of the same way. First coat is going to be a lighter coat, we'll let that tack up. And then the second coat will be a full wet coat.
so I'll let that tack up. Uh, and I'll test a spot on the back of it, and when it sticks to my hand, I'll know I can hammer it on, so I'll bring you back. Going for broke, we're either going to flow it out nice or it's all going to be dripping on the floor. Accelerator made it go about 10 minutes, plus I had a uh, fast reducer in it, so it's, uh, it's set up good. It's not sticking to my hand.
you guys back after I've got the gun cleaned up and uh, we're ready to take a peek at those uh, probably in about 15 or 20 minutes. So I'll talk to you guys in a few. Uh, there you go. Your, uh, your feature film for today. They're not perfect. I mean, there's, uh, there's marks in the metal and things like that, but they're going on a snowplow and they're going to run into shit. So there you go. I got uh, a medium coat on it that I let tack up. They've got a full wet coat on them. And uh, I came back, I had a little paint in the gun, which is always the worst thing to do, to just waste your paint. But uh, this is equipment, so I blew a third coat on them. Um, another, so they have two full wet coats on them. Uh, I got one dripper right there on that corner. Everything else is good. No sags anywhere. And uh, there's your temperature. Painting not recommended by 10 degrees at least. But uh, you can do this stuff even when it's it's cold out. I wouldn't recommend going much colder than this. Um, but a little accelerator in the paint, it's a piece of equipment. If it was a car, I sure as hell wouldn't be painting it right now. But uh, these will fly. Yep, that kind. So I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, we'll catch you guys over the weekend hopefully. See ya.